Well, there's a strike action that uh, there's a strike, not a strike action. Well, one of those two called uh, by the Ghana Nurses and Midwives Association. The Physicians Assistant Certified Registered Anesthetics are also on this move. They're calling for better service of conditions. And so they are not working, even though there's been an interlocutory injunction secured by the National Labor Commission. My colleague Manuel Cranting is roving and he will tell us the situation at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. On the back of that, we'll speak to Madame Pepechua Ofori Ampo for President of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Let's go to Manuel. Uh, Manuel, good morning to you. What can you report from the Kolibu Teaching Hospital? Is this action affecting the work? Mm. Well, Ma, the, uh, the, the strike action really is um, underway here um, at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. In fact, I've been to a number of departments here. I've been to the accident, um, accident center, which is an emergency unit, also a referral um, unit here at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. What I've been able to gather really is that, well, the rotation nurses, those who were um, on duty overnight, um, are the ones who were there this morning and they are packing their bag and baggage and moving out. Um, I'm told that the reporting time for the morning nurses is 8 a.m., just a few minutes um, after 8 a.m. Uh, what I've been able to gather is that well, there's not one um, you know, um, um, nurse that has reported this morning. Um, I, I see gradually uh, a massing up of patients and people who have brought patients to the hospital trying to get access um, into the facility. At the accident center specifically, um, quite informally, I was able to pick that um, the, the nurses who were on duty overnight were ordered to reduce the number of admission that they made overnight. And so you, you have quite, you know, um, um, a beating down number of people who have been admitted this morning and uh, and, and this morning they are not admitting anybody uh, at all regularly at the accident center there are about 50 nurses on duty because i mean it's a, it's a huge facility mm. also a referral center like i said earlier and you have about 50 nurses every uh, uh, at, at every point in time but this morning um, the folks who were on duty last night are moving out and I'm not able to catch um, with my eyes any of the nurses who are reporting um, um, this morning and that's become a problem. Uh, like like I, I, I was telling you earlier, I see a gradual massing up of patients at the accident um, center who are trying to get uh, you know uh, um, uh, 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 access into the facility. Mm. Behind you also, you have the Rebecca Kufado um, um, pediatric uh, center. Th this one is a PICU, that's what they call it, is the Rebecca Kufado PICU. But you are, you are seeing people sitting right in front of um, uh, the, the, the building. That's the pediatric uh, center. You, you are not getting them having access into the building, which means that the people who are supposed to be attending to them um, are not on duty. Okay. Well, and special greetings to nurses and midwives all over Ghana. Well, we are grateful that we are fighting for them. Great. So, is the strike on or not? The strike is on. As of Friday, when we're closing from the office, we have not been served with any injunction. So, as far as we are concerned, our action safe. And just like we communicated in our press conference, which was held on the 17th of September, um, we indicated that from today, 8 a.m., we were not going to provide services until the employer listens to what we are saying. Mm. I was reading the statement that you issued. You indicated that your meeting on the 15th and 16th was quite positive, uh, as in the employer's uh, posturing was good, but they still couldn't meet your terms. So can you explain what you're demanding? Thank you very much, my dear. So um, this whole process actually started in July 2019. In July 2019, we were invited by the employer to the Ministry of Health to discuss how we will initiate the renegotiation of the conditions of service. Ideally, we should have even 
uh, made a move when the collective agreement expired. We signed it in April 2016, and it was for two years. So in 2018, of course, beginning 2018, it had expired. But we knew that it had not been implemented. Nothing in it had been implemented, all because it was left for the heads of the health facilities to use the internally generated fund to pay for these entitlements for nurses and midwives. Everything in that document. And therefore, it wasn't implemented. And the reasons of the heads of these facilities was, was that they don't have enough of funds, the IGF funds, to pay these entitlements. And even in January, somewhere January, February this year, the Ministry of Health engaged these heads of facilities in a stakeholder meeting held in the southern zone, middle zone, and northern zone. And the story was the same. They said they have not been able to implement these conditions of service or the collective agreement signed over all these years, all because they don't have money. They don't have money. So in that July meeting, when we met with the employer, we made it clear that once we sign the rules of engagement, indeed, which we signed on the 29th of July, 2019, the negotiations and whatever we were going to agree on, the allowances that were due nurses should be added to their salaries on the payroll so that we don't, the part where we need to get it from the facility, we also go and struggle to get the heads to pay from the IGF fund. But there are specific allowances that we think are unique that we are going to propose. And for that matter, those ones should be paid as part of our salary. Mm. We discuss all of this. Then comes, we had some one or two meetings at the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. We won't call it negotiation. Proper negotiation started in February 2020. Mm -hmm. But you will ask me, how did we arrive at the proposal that we tabled? We took the opportunity to engage our members in all the regions we did that exercise in October 2019. We engaged them. And yes, the Fair Wages wrote to us in September to table our proposal. We couldn't because we had not engaged the members to listen to what they actually wanted. We did that in October 2019, holding regional debates in all our 10 administrative regions. Following that, we came back to Accra and held consultative meetings with our allied Association, which is certified registered and and the physician assistant. Mm. And we also called our sister nursing and military associations to also come and sit with us. In those consultative meetings, we also had the leadership of our specialized group. And we discussed this into detail with our labor consultants. And we arrived at the proposal that we wanted to table to the employer. Okay. So on the 20th of January, we tabled that proposal to the employer. Unfortunately, we realized a few days before the negotiations could start in February, we realized that the final proposal we had submitted, a portion was left out about the non-core category two and pay allowance, mm. which we had agreed in our consultative meetings and from the uh, uh, members. And that was supposed to be added as an appendix. We realized that had not been added. So we elected the fair wages and we sent it by mail to them. We also sent a hard copy to them. When we met in February, that meeting did not actually last long. We discussed um, some few issues, um, components from the beginning of the proposal. We did not reach anywhere. Mm -hmm. and we adjourned the meeting to another sitting. Unfortunately, before we could sit, COVID came. Okay. And halted everything. So the negotiations couldn't continue. And when you think about us as nurses and midwives, yes, we are frontline healthcare workers. And in the COVID pandemic, we were at the front giving services to the people of Ghana, mm -hmm. who are our mothers, who are our fathers, who are our brothers and sisters. And we, we have been doing that, and we are still doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to follow up. Even within the 
pandemic, we were telling the employer, we need to sit and continue. Although this pandemic, we can ensure social distancing, follow the, all the protocols, and still engage wearing our mask. Mm -hmm. But we were told the stakeholders, the employers, were afraid of the COVID. They were not going to allow for us to sit and all those things. Finally, we were able to get them on the 3rd and 4th of June to sit and continue with the negotiations. Okay. When we sat down, we were able to go through the documents and we accepted or we agreed on all those issues for the thing mm -hmm. where we needed to change the wedding and all those things. We did it. Then we got to the portion where we were proposing specific allowances specific allowances, in our view, unique to the work that we do. And we needed the employer to agree with us so that those allowances could be factored as part of our salary, just as it's been done for other categories of healthcare professionals. On the 4th of June, the employer told us that they needed to get money from the Ministry of Finance in order to agree or not agree with us on those allowances. And okay. It's fine. It's a, we can agree. Why not? Go and take your mandate. And then once you have your mandate, we can continue. Okay. Because of time, can we fast forward to the 15th and 16th meeting of yes, September? I, I, I really appreciate the time constraint, but I need the people of Ghana to appreciate the issues. So I'm going to summarize it. But what happened was it took the employer three whole months when we, meet on, when we met on the 3rd of September 2020, after their proposed mandate, they came back telling us that out of the eight allowances or nine allowances that we had proposed, they were going to be able to do just one. Even that one, which is the non-basic um, allowance, which is being paid in lieu of the market premium that had been stagnant over the years. They had given to all health professionals already, but they were going to be able to give that to us uh, once we are, we are able to negotiate the, the terms. So the eight allowances that we had tabled, four which were going to, in our view, should go to all nurses and midwives, and four others which were going to be specific. The four to all nurses and midwives, we said, with, in our view, and uh, what our members had communicated to us, mm. they all need uniform allowance, professional development allowance, rent allowance, transportation allowance. The four specific that should go to some section of our membership were rural incentive allowance to go for our members who are in the hinterlands, the okay. Indians, crossing mm. rivers, going through the bushes to tell the people of Ghana, give them something small. Some move to those rural areas, their marriages fail, their boyfriends leave them, they are not able to get good suitors to even marry. And mm. so, majority of nurses and midwives are females. We said, give dual allowance to our senior managers. These nurses and above were already entitled to receive. They were not receiving. We said, so the, the, down to PLO. Madam Ophariam Pofo, did they totally reject it or they said in the meantime we couldn't afford it? Oh, of course. They, they said there was no money to give all these things that we are asking for. And note, it was the same excuse given four years ago in 2015. That was why we were pushed to the facilities, for the facilities to pay from the IGF. Okay. So, so can I just ask for how long will this action uh, be on, uh, especially since we're told that the NLC has secured this injunction. You said you haven't been served. So your as members as, have embarked on the action. Yes. As far as we are concerned, there are two, no timelines related to this strike action. There are no timelines. When we formally receive the injunction, we will respect it as such. Okay, so but with the, your the, members... Let me say this, please. It lies with the employer. All of this lies with the employer. The employer needs to take a decision. Having tabled all these allowances, we are not saying that give us all at a go. But they might be able to at least meet us halfway. Okay, I was they just I was just going to ask your members are over eighty thousand, I understand. But together with the anesthetists and and the other group, uh, the other assistant physicians, how many of you are embarking on this action? 
in total, we are over 80,000, so that I can say. I cannot give you the specific number. So the situation that we're observing at Kolibu is what we will see in all the other health centers. Uh, with the night nurses going off their shift this morning, they will not be replaced. When it's night duty this evening, they are not coming. And then the uh, morning staff are not reporting, afternoon staff will not report. And I said, we provide essential healthcare services. And we need the employer to listen to us. Okay. We are, we are not uh, adamant lead leaders or nurses and midwives in the country, not sensitive to the, pe the needs of the people of Ghana. But to note that even when a nurse or midwife is sick, that person takes care of his or her own medical service. Absolutely. We're, we are aware of that. Just finally... Just finally, and, 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 I, and I appreciate where you're coming from, but I also just wanted to say that we're still in the period of the pandemic. Yes. Especially when you said your services are essential. Yes. Yeah. And so let me tell you something. So during, during the heat of the pandemic, during the heat of the pandemic, I tell you, our nurses and midwives were even, even eager to lay down their shoes because what they needed, the PPEs were not available. I would say now it has improved, mm. and it's because the, the numbers have also gone down. Okay, I just wanted but to say that. So irrespective time, of the fact that we're time. dealing with a global pandemic, you're still embarking on this action. Exactly, because okay. we are talking about conditions of service. Okay. Conditions of service for any worker, whether in public or private, it's important because over so many years, that is what is going to determine what you, you get. Okay, There's all right. There's or midwives in this country who receive any single allowance as part of the basic salary. Okay, madam, we, we will have to leave it here. Maybe if you have some more time tomorrow, we can continue this conversation in Very studio, well. if it's okay uh, you for you. For the time. Absolutely, and thank you as well. Time. Thank you. We thank you as well uh, for explaining the issues to us. So there you have it. Uh, indeed, the action is on across the country. We'll be bringing you reports uh, from the ground.